Hello, Mary Ann. You're at your shop right now, aren't you? Looking after the store as usual, I suppose. Did you happen to see the shop across the street? If you haven't, I urge you to take a peek. Really something. Huh? Oh, hello, Marge. What's up? The store across the street? Are you talking about the kind of fancy-looking cafe? I heard it's supposed to open tomorrow. Looks kind of nice, I have to say. I wonder how much they spent on the whole place. Yeah, that's the one. Really impressive, huh? Yeah, it's nice. But what about it? That it's nice? I agree, it's nice. Don't be too surprised, Mary Ann, but... Surprise, surprise, that's my cafe. Our grand opening is tomorrow. Oh, really? I had no idea. But I thought, where'd you come up with all that money? It must have cost a fortune. Huh? Are you saying I couldn't afford it? You make me sound poor or something. That's sort of mean, isn't it? No, no, uh, please don't take it that way. If I sounded like that, I'm really sorry. Maybe it came out kind of weird, huh? Sorry. It's just that whenever we would meet with the other women, you'd always go on and on about not having enough money. So it, it was just shock, that's all. But I see now that it was just complaining like we all do. But I guess you were secretly saving up, huh? You just took me off balance. You sure know how to surprise people. Keeping everyone in suspense and then boom. About the money? Oh, that's a secret. Let's say it's business and it's confidential. <laughs> yeah, right. No problem. I don't have to know that, right? Really? You seem a bit flustered. Is it because you now have competition? Getting a bit worried, maybe? Huh? No, not at all. But I suppose if a shop similar to mine opens across the street, there, of course, will be a bit of rivalry. No way to avoid that, I guess, huh? But we're located across the street from each other, and I think we cater to different kinds of customers, so after a while, things will settle down. You'll have your regular customers, and I'll have mine. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. My shop is really attractive, and I have a feeling customers will gravitate toward my shop in no time. I just hope I don't take all your customers. If a nice fancy cafe opens across the street from your old beat-up cafe, well, people will obviously choose the more charming one, don't you agree? Uh, our place isn't exactly beat-up. Maybe needs a paint job here and there, but I wouldn't say beat up. I hear that place has been in business since your grandfather opened it God knows how long ago, and it hasn't been fixed up since. Is that true? Uh, can I stop you right there, Marge? I know this is business and all, and it's actually good to have a little rivalry. I think it's healthy, it keeps us on our toes, but... I would prefer that you not badmouth our shop. Oh, did I hurt your feelings, Marianne? And you talk of a rivalry. I don't see any kind of rivalry. Your beat-up cafe isn't even on our radar. <laughs> well, our place is seen as quaint and antique. People prefer that to some bright and gaudy exterior. Gaudy, huh? I don't see it that way. As a matter of fact, I think most people will see it as clean and hygienic. With a shop like that, it's a matter of time before they find some food contamination and the place is forced to close. <laughs> yes, well, we both run a restaurant cafe and any kind of food contamination or poisoning incident would bankrupt us. I suggest we both be very careful that doesn't happen. I have nothing to worry about. Our place is spotless and super clean. No need to worry about that. <laughs> and please don't compare my place with your old dilapidated shack. And to be honest, the place is an eyesore. I can't understand why people go there. I should warn you in advance, our place is going to be extremely busy after it opens. 
you probably won't be getting many customers tomorrow. Why don't you take the opportunity to clean the place up? <laughs> In fact, you really should have fixed that quaint shack up a long time ago or you wouldn't have been in this predicament. I hope you don't resent me for putting up such a nice and beautiful cafe right across the street from you. <laughs> Hello, Marianne. How have you been keeping busy? Or are you just lounging around and whiling away the time? So sorry that business is not picking up. I told you you should have used the time wisely and did a little fixing up. <laughs> oh, hello, Marge. Been about a week since you opened, huh? Looks like you're doing okay. As for my place, we're not doing so bad. Revenue hasn't really changed much. I would say it's within our forecast. I was surprised our regular customers were so loyal. Oh, on the defensive, are we? Well, I don't blame you for being touchy about it. It's hard to see your little rundown shop deteriorating even further. I was just thinking. You run that place with your husband, right? He does the cooking and waitering, anything that comes up, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, he helps out any way he can. It is a family business. Tell you what, Marianne, since you guys are really having a hard time, what if I told you I'd be willing to hire your husband at our place? Help you guys out a little. What do you say? Uh, excuse me? Hire my husband? Uh, are you serious? I'm just lending a helping hand to a fellow cafe owner, that's all. You don't have to be so shocked. I figured your business was suffering, so I offered to help. What's wrong with that? If your husband comes and works for us part-time, it'll help to cut costs. With the lack of clients, he has nothing to do anyways, right? No need for that. We're not really in the red. Business is as usual. As a matter of fact, my husband is pretty busy, so thanks for the offer, but... Will pass. There you go again, getting all defensive. <laughs> I know that pride is probably getting in the way, but there's no need. What are neighbors for, right? I'm sure you've seen the big long lines outside our place, and it's only been a week. It hasn't let up at all. I mean, can you believe it? It's only been a week, and our cafe has become this popular. Who would have thought, right? Now, if I could hire your husband, a pretty handsome guy, I have to admit, if he would work at our place, I bet we could double the amount of customers. Just think of the PR. A handsome guy like your husband running our cafe alongside a beautiful woman like myself? Our place would be the most talked about place anywhere. I bet we would be written up in the local paper, or even a spot on TV. Oh, am I hearing you correctly? Did you start that cafe for the sole purpose of luring my husband there? Was that it? Not so sure about that. <laughs> That's confidential. Well, I'm positive of one thing, Marge. My husband has no interest whatsoever in your new cafe. And I can tell you right now, zero interest in you. Sorry to disappoint you. Just trying to help out. Let me make one thing perfectly clear to you, Marge, because you just don't seem to understand. The long years of success since my grandfather started this place is not because my husband is handsome. That has nothing to do with it. Really? I thought that was the only reason you managed to stay in business, to be honest. You know what, Marge? I don't want to have to explain this to you, but what you should be worried about is trying to kickstart your new cafe so it will last going forward. I don't think you have time to be trying to lure my husband to your new place or to be trash-talking me and my shop. 
you're attracting customers because they're curious, but what happens when that curiosity wears off? Then what? Thanks for the advice, Marianne, but your advice won't do much good. I mean, take a look at your place now. <laughs> it's not simply out of curiosity that people flock to my cafe, Marianne. It was my business sense that did that. Look at the place. Look at all the people lined up outside. In less than a week, I was able to transform this place into one of the most popular cafes in town. There's no denying it. As an astute businesswoman, you should also know that people flock to newly opened businesses out of curiosity. The real test is only starting, Marge. Will customers be willing to come back a second time or a third? That's what matters. That's what keeps you in business for years to come. You know what? It's kind of annoying to be told that from someone whose cafe is empty. I don't see anyone waiting to get in. <laughs> like I said, we're doing okay. We've been in business for years. We've had good times and bad. We've retained a loyal customer base. Yes, yes, whatever. Oh, and about my offer to hire your husband? That still stands, so when you decide, let me know as soon as possible. I'll pay him a reasonable hourly rate. Like I said, Marge, he has no intention of working there. Is it true? I just heard about it, Mary Ann. I couldn't believe it. This is serious. You know that, I hope. I warned you about this. It finally happened. A case of food poisoning, right? That's a death knell for your business. You won't be able to continue. I feel so bad for you, both of you, out of a job. That's tough. What are you going to do, Mary Ann? Like I offered before, I'm still willing to hire your husband at our cafe, but only your husband. I'm sure you can find something somewhere else. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, Marge. What food poisoning? I wish you wouldn't spread unfounded rumors. It's bad for business. Are you serious, Marianne? Are you really thinking of not reporting this to the authorities? You could lose your business license, you know. Food poisoning is no laughing matter. If I were you, I would really consider the pros and cons before doing anything irrational. But it's just inconceivable to me, as a business owner like you, and not to think of the safety of customers? How could you? Again, Marge, I have no idea what you're babbling on about. What proof do you have to accuse us of such a thing? That ambulance that came yesterday. What was that all about then? It looked like it was something major. All those people crowded around. You're not denying that, are you? When was this? You say this was yesterday? Yes, an ambulance pulled up in front of your old beat-up cafe. I saw someone getting carried away on a gurney. I know what I saw. Don't try and deny it, Marianne. Right afterward, I went out there and talked to Mr. Gaines. You know him, right? He owns that pizza place down the street. Well, he told me that your little establishment has been around for some time and that you've had sanitation problems for years. Not only that, but the entire place is antiquated. The kitchen and the dishwasher systems wouldn't pass muster now. Said the place is a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, Marge, can I stop you right there? For starters, our cafe was closed yesterday. We've always taken Monday off and try to stay open on the weekends. I thought maybe you would know that. Uh closed? You mean? Yes, we were not open. We're closed on Mondays. Everyone knows that. Closed on Mondays, huh? I had no idea. I heard about that incident from a neighbor, but 
what she told me was that Mrs. Todd, who runs that gelato place next door, apparently slipped on the stairs and hurt her back. I guess that's why they called the ambulance. They parked right in front of our place because two cars were blocking the entrance to Mrs. Todd's shop. I guess it looked like they were at my cafe. They had no other choice but to stop in front of our place. At least, that's the story I heard. Oh, really? There was such a big crowd out there, and Mr. Gaines, uh, you know. You know what bothers me more, Marge? If you're running a business like a cafe, I would think you would know when other rival businesses are operating. If you want to run a business, you should know this. Are you sure you can manage to keep operating this way? Actually, I knew that. I've got it all on my calendar in the office. I've just been too busy lately, uh, you know, with the long lines and all. And why did you spread rumors about our place having this food poisoning incident if you had known we were not operating? You wouldn't have made that mistake. Yeah, well, it just looked that way, so... And why didn't you verify that it was really a case of food poisoning? It could have been any number of things. Maybe a kid tripped in front of our cafe, for example. To go and blab about someone getting sick in our cafe and spreading that false rumor around is, honestly speaking, totally irresponsible. And spreading rumors about food poisoning is a serious accusation, Marge. It could have ruined us. We may already have lost customers due to this. Do you realize the gravity of this? That was not my intention. I was only trying to. And another thing. Those two cars that were parked in front of Mrs. Todd's place? Turns out they were customers visiting your cafe. Mrs. Todd told me she had complained to you about using her parking space, but you completely ignored her. That's why the ambulance had to park in front of our place. Huh? Why do you even know about all this? Did you snoop around and ask questions? Unlike you, we have a tight-knit business community here, and we exchange information all the time. We help each other out when needed. Although Mr. Barnes has shunned any contact with us. He only started his shop a year or two ago. I guess he prefers to go it alone. A tight-knit business community? I've never heard of this. Why wasn't I invited? People have been in various businesses around here for generations. Like I said, a tight-knit community. A lot of information gets passed back and forth. The information I'm getting is that, although you spread these malicious rumors, nobody believes any of it. I doubt Mr. Barnes even believes it. Oh yeah, and about the owner of that gelato shop, Mrs. Todd? She's my husband's aunt. Huh? You guys are related then? Yes. Like I said, it's a tight-knit community. I've got a bunch of relatives that own businesses around here. As a matter of fact, my brother runs that burger place on 5th Street. Huh? And I thought it was a great chance for me to do away with that old rundown cafe once and for all. But you know what, Marge? You should be grateful that it didn't go as planned. Huh? Why should I be grateful? Well, for one, I won't have to press charges against you for slander and spreading false rumors about this food poisoning incident. If those false rumors spread and customers avoided my cafe, well, I could have sued you. Huh? Well, it didn't do any harm. Nobody believed it anyway. Lucky for you. But if people had, you would have been prosecuted and ended up with a criminal record. Huh? A criminal record? What are you even talking about? That's right, Marge. You would have been legally deemed a lawbreaker. You were on the verge of breaking the law. So you should be grateful that it didn't progress any further. Come on, Mary Ann, you're blowing this all out of proportion. You're over-exaggerating this whole thing. I wish you wouldn't threaten me like that. I'm not threatening you, Marge, and for your information, this is not an over-exaggeration. There are similar cases just like this all over the country. Some people have even served sentences and paid enormous fines for exactly what you did. 
getting back to what I was saying, the main reason for causing all this in the first place is... It was simply out of frustration and payback for not being able to lure my husband away and have him work at your place. Isn't that right? This was all about retribution for not getting your way. Uh, that's not how I... Please, Marge, don't try denying it. I know all about it. My husband said you had been persistent in your effort to persuade him to come and work for you. Although I suspect there were ulterior motives, which I won't get into here. Anyway, my husband resisted, refusing your constant pestering of him. He finally sighed with relief when you finally eased up a little. I was... I was only trying to help him. I don't know where you got the idea that we were in trouble financially. You probably thought that the only reason we were able to stay afloat was because my husband was good-looking and people women were flocking to our cafe just for that reason. But what other reason is there? That place is a dump. Why would people go there? I was only trying to help him and you out. Yeah, you're right. I did try and lure him to my place. I figured it would be a wise business decision. He would definitely bring in business. Any business-minded person would do it. Do you really think such a short-sighted strategy would last? Do you really believe that you would be able to continue to do business for over 60 years as we have? You're completely delusional if you think that's a sound business decision. Wait, excuse me? That place has been operating for more than 60 years? That's right. But getting back to what I was saying, yeah, sure. I won't deny that my husband's good looks attracts female customers and even some guys, but our main selling point is our fantastic coffee. That's what people come to our cafe for, and they've been coming here for decades. You're saying you guys are coffee specialists? My husband was a regular customer back in the day. I was working part-time at the cafe to help out my dad. That's where we met and eventually got married. After that, he started working at the cafe, where my father taught him everything he knows about coffee, and the technique and skill required to make the best coffee in the world. Well, at least the best around these parts. I think we've succeeded given the fact that people have been coming here for decades, and we have a solid customer base because of our dedication. Long story short, we've maintained our decades-long tradition handed down from my father, which continues to the present. Tradition, huh? Unlike your fancy cafe, which caters to the Instagram crowd, we don't target just young and fashionable people. I told you before that our customer base is completely different. We cater to totally different customers. Uh, yeah, right, uh, different customers. Okay. What I'm trying to tell you, Marge, is that you should really start putting some thought into how you can make your place last. Rather than conjuring up some short-sighted scheme to attract customers, think long-term. Excuse me, what am I supposed to do? I can't just make up decades of so-called tradition in a day. Maybe you should start by correcting the obvious. Like the attitude and impoliteness of the part-timers working there, or that maybe you should reprimand them for talking too much, or perhaps you need to reevaluate the dishes being served. Perhaps the chocolate cookies are too small, or the cake slices are too thin. Is the cafe manager sitting back and lounging around too much? Which really degrades the look of the place and the overall impression it leaves. You said there were long lines outside, but... That seems to be waning recently. You know what, Marge? What I just said may be the reason for the decline. Did you even contemplate that? Are you saying I don't know how to run my business? Well, I don't need your advice. I heard that you were asking some of the neighbors for money. Are you sure you can keep this up? It's not easy to run a cafe. You always have to be on your toes. Like I said, I don't need your advice. I have my way of doing business. Leave me alone.
After I gave her that advice, she didn't pester me or my husband any longer and went about trying to run her business her way. But it seems she was not only having trouble running her cafe, but her personal life was in the doldrums. About her down payment on the cafe that I was concerned about, it turns out she scraped together the cash from her husband's savings and dipped into accounts she was not permitted to touch and apparently borrowed a considerable amount from various financial institutions. Her husband, who was working overseas at the time, was absolutely furious. Another thing that thoroughly pissed him off was when he heard that she was lusting after my husband. What's more, she has two kids, but completely disregarded them and focused all her attention on the cafe. The more the customer base declined, the more she became frustrated, spending every waking minute on how to revive the cafe. You can probably imagine where this probably went. That's right, the marriage eventually ended badly and the cafe suffered a similar fate. All that was left was a mountain of debt. All her efforts were just one wild goose chase, a self-defeating endeavor. Last I heard, she was working various jobs to make ends meet and to pay back the enormous debt she had accumulated. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.